PTF back with you to talk about a topic near and dear to my heart. And to do that, we bring in a man you might know if you're already in the horse racing world from the fantastic work he does at Monmouth Park. And he's also well regarded as a man who runs a very good handicapping contest. He is Brian Skirka. Brian, how are you today? Pete, I am fantastic. Always good to be on with you. You got these fancy new headphones and they sound great, man. Uh, your, your, your audio quality is like you, you've gone from listed state to grade one. So thank you for uh, getting that sorted out. Hopefully I have uh, things that people actually want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to pull back the lens a little bit. So I actually got started my first like real full-time job in horse racing was working at the place DRF, we affectionately call the place with the letters around here, covering handicapping contests. This was an area I'd watched from afar, got very into the world, quickly got to meet you and, and some of the other folks who uh, put on these contests. But we have a lot of new people around here. And I've had a lot of people ask me specifically about the sort of uh, basics of handicapping contests. I figured you were the per per perfect person to talk to, especially because you have your sort of signature contest of the year coming up on June 3rd. And we will talk about the particulars of that coming up. But let me just start with this. Why, in your opinion, do horse players like these handicapping contests so much? So I think it's two part. Um, there's probably more than two parts, but to me, um, you know, equity is always number one, you know, an opportunity to make more money or, you know, sometimes it's cash, sometimes it's NHC seats, which we'll get into, and sometimes it's uh, Breeders' Cup betting challenge seats, which we'll which we'll get into. Um, but I think it's just the the ability to kind of do what what your colleague and our friend Drew Coney did last year at the BCBC, turn what was it three to five or two to five, whatever flight line was, into an insane amount of money. You know, <laughs> if you're if you're not in a contest, you know, you bet flight line at whatever it was two to five, and you get. 40 cents on your dollar, you know, a contest allows you to uh, make even more than you would normally. And then the vast majority of contests are live money cash contests. So in addition to getting your 40 cents on the dollar that you get on flight line, you get, you know, the prizes that the, the contests pay out. So I think equity, whether it's cash or, or contest seats is, is reason number one, you know, we're all in this game to, to make money. Um, but I think number two is the extra layer of competitiveness and the challenge of it and um you know horse racing in itself and power mutual wagering is is competition i'm betting against you and and you're betting against somebody else but a contest just is an extra layer of that where there's a leaderboard and i want my name to be higher than yours um <laughs> which is appealing but but i also want one of the things that i love about contests in general and, and the nhc like i said we'll get into is the it's 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 kind of competitive, but it's also, you know, friendships are made throughout it. So so right now, Pete, I want to finish ahead of you. Absolutely. But the second that I'm, I'm out of contention, I'll root my heart out for you. You know, it, it, it's it's a friendly competition where I, I certainly want to win. But but if I'm not going to, I want my friends to win. You summed that up beautifully. You should have written the book on handicapping contests, my friend, because you nailed that answer. And it is, it's is—it's—it's a ton of fun. As I like to say, lifelong friendships are made in these contest rooms. And now, you know, obviously there's a lot of online participation and we like that, but there's nothing that beats the magic of being in these rooms. Let's talk about the two majors and then we're going to get into your contest coming up in just a couple of weeks time, the pick your prize contest. We'll start with the NHC, which you've mentioned a couple of times, national horse players championship feels like for the next few years, at least it's going to be conducted in March out in Las Vegas. It's the only contest you have to qualify to participate in. And that adds a special vibe because the 600 people who are out there, many of them feel like they've already won because they get this trip to Vegas, no online participation there, but you get this trip to Vegas. People go there with the attitude that they've already won and, and it creates a unique feeling as compared to any other contest. You've been at a few of these NHCs and a lot of the players who play in your contest, they want the NHC above all else. What to you is special about that event? So much. Uh, I would say this was probably my seventh, maybe NHC in a row. Um, and just being at, being at it for the first time, um, it, it was just a, an experience unlike any other. I, I literally, I, I ran the contest back then at Mammoth too, and I feel like we sent 20 or 25 players to that NHC seven years ago, which is pretty good compared to a lot of other tracks. But I left that event just saying, 
you know, without, with, with, you know, I'm going to do anything I possibly can to get as many players as possible into this room because it's, it's just, you know, I, I compare the NHC a little bit to the, the world series of poker. It, it's kind of a different, so some similarities, some differences. As you said, the, the biggest thing with the NHC that separates it from all other contests is you cannot buy your way in. You have to qualify in. So you have to come to Monmouth Park or Keeneland or, you know, win an online tournament to to win that seat to the NHC. And, and once you're there, it is an absolute grind. It's a three day contest. Uh, there's seven tracks that you can that you can play from. There's a combination of mandatory races. So everyone in the room is betting the exact same race, which the excitement level for those races is off the chart. But then you have this big pool of, of, of optional races that, that you can pick from. So it's strategy of, of what races do I pick? And it's also what makes the NHC unique is it's $2 win place optional uh, plays only. It's not live money. It's not the Breeders' Cup contest, but we'll, which we'll get into. It's not the Mammoth contest, which are all live money. It's, it's, it's optional plays. So you might absolutely love a horse, could be the cinch of all time at two to one, but you, you now have to think about, do I actually want to play that horse because it's two to one enough money to, to help me here when a lot of other players are firing at 10, 12 to one shot. So it's, it's just an amazing dynamic. The, the setup, going back to the camaraderie that we talked about, the setup of the NHC is big 10, 12 person tables. And a lot of the players sit with the same people each year. So you have, you know, the table 29 group or whatever, the same 10 to 12 men and women that sit with sit with each other every year and then they'll come to a contest at Monmouth and they're all they'll all sit together you know friendships are made from what 10 years ago was 10 strangers that sat next to each other at a random table are now you know lifelong friends that travel throughout the country and and play with each other so and and of course if you win the NHC you know I think this year was $800,000 first prize and you get an Eclipse Award and get to make a speech at the Eclipse Awards your national horse player of the year so Prizes are, are second to none, and, and the just being out in Vegas, being one of 600 players to qualify, it is truly an event like no other. There's an equality to it, too. You know, I mean, I love the BCBC, obviously, but, you know, we've seen the established paradigm. You've got to bet like that's Monopoly money. Not everybody can do that. You know, you can still win good prizes not doing that in the BCBC, but if you're talking about winning it all, you got to, you know, be in a certain financial position in life, I think it's safe to say. NHC... You know, you're there. You there, there's no real money being risked at that point. It gives the littler player a chance to sit across from a pro at their final table and and get the best of it without being out of their wagering comfort zone. The other thing I wanted to bring up about the NHC, I just find this hilarious. You talked about the competitive nature of players looking at the leaderboard, wanting to see their name above your friends. You have a little uh, competition yourself going with our friend uh, Jim Goodman from Keeneland. I wanted to ask you about. Oh, absolutely. Jim uh, puts on a, a phenomenal contest as an as a NHC Hall of Famer as of this past year. He was inducted last year into the Hall of Fame for the great work that he does as a tournament uh, director and a player as well. But yeah, he, uh, you know, I think he had 292 or 293 at his big contest this spring. And the biggest I've ever done at Pick Your Prize last year was 290. So I'm going to try to uh, get at least 293 or 294 this year to one up him. But it always, you know, like, like you said, there's a, there's a handful of tournament directors that go to the NHC every year, and, and we kind of all kind of look at each other and say, hey, how many do you have in the top 20? How, how many are you? Uh, where, where did that player qualify from who just won this year? So it's a friendly competition, but uh, it just makes, you know, competition makes everything better. If, you're a, if a, there's a great handicapper sitting next to me, I need to up my game to beat him or her. If Jim is a great contest director, which he is, I need to up my game the whole you know, to me, the whole point of horse racing is competition. I want to win, whether it's betting a horse or, you know, creating an event or doing a handicapping contest. I'm in it to win. So the, the more people that are good at their jobs out there, the better. You mentioned equity is the number one reason contests are popular. There's no better equity in terms of, you know, if you're an advantage player out there or just somebody who really wants to get value on their gambling dollar than the Breeders' Cup betting challenge. That ability to turn a three to five shot into uh, a, a three to two shot, you know, which essentially um, Drew Coatney did going all in on flight line in the, in the Breeders' Cup betting challenge. This is bet of not just bet of the year type stuff, but bet of the lifetime type stuff potentially. And there's a lot of ways to qualify, including our horse player happy hour games. Those are going to be starting off 
in June um, on uh, on horseplayers.com, one of the big qualifying websites for both the BCBC and the NHC. You'll be hearing a lot more about that on the network. But what's been your experience with the BCBC? Do you have players who target that event above all others? Absolutely. BCBC, very different, as you said, than the NHC. Uh, BCBC is a live money contest that you can buy your way into. Uh, a lot of players, you can qualify online or at different tracks um, to any of these. You know, at Monmouth, we, we qualify players to the NHC and BCBC. So you can either win your way into the BCBC or you can buy your way in. It's a $10,000 buy-in. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 7500 of that goes to your bankroll and then 2500 uh, is you know goes to the prize pool. They get a huge number of players. You know, by far the biggest live money contest of the year. You know, thanks to the best two days of racing of the year. So they have an absolutely massive prize pool. And like you said, it's it's different skills for sure than the NHC. The NHC is probably focused more on picking the most number of winners that you can. The the BCBC is kind of intestinal fortitude. You know, if, if you if you really like a horse. You know, you can bet as much money on that horse as possible or, you know, they, they allow exotics as well. So, you know, you could hit one race for hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and win the contest right there. Uh, it definitely it, it definitely is appealing to players. I think the live money aspect of it um, is, is very appealing to players, because even if, you know, obviously, if you have a great day for Drew Coatney, you know, a, a life changing day. But to the player who finished 23rd. You know, and maybe I don't know if that came in or out of the the prize pool there. But if you finished twenty third and you doubled your bankroll, that's still a good day. You yep. know, you left with good. most years that would also get you an NHC seat. So it's right. a, it's a it becomes sort of a win win. Right. Even you know that's why I'm you know again the the NHC is is the the national contest and 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 above all. But I'm a I'm a big live money contest uh, fan. Just, just so that, you know, you could leave with, with something, you know, you, you could have a, a good day and, you know, if you're on the top leaderboard, fantastic. You made money betting and you get additional prizes. But even if you had a so-so day betting, but fell right outside the, the top prize sheet, you know, you could still, you still leave with your bankroll and it was still a good day. It's all in the name for me with those two, right? The NHC, which was written now it's national horse players championship. It was originally uh, national handicapping championship it's a handicapping contest it's it's finding winners at prices basically is what that is bcbc betting challenge and you mentioned about the intestinal fortitude that these days i think from here out it's pretty much going to come down to who can make the the biggest boldest bet at the end and, and smartest bet and get the get the number and get the job done so i've interviewed a lot of players you know we always talk about the best places to qualify invariably in the top three, if not the top one contest they're going to mention as ones that they target all year long. It's the pick your prize contest. It's coming up at Monmouth on June 3rd. Brian, tell folks what they need to know about this year's pick your prize. Sure. So th this contest is, this is the eighth year of pick your prize. Um, I invented this contest, if you want to say, uh, geared towards kind of exactly what we've been talking about in the lead-in. There, there are certainly groups of players that only want to qualify for the NHC or only want to qualify for the BCBC. And there's also players that only play for cash. And obviously there's players that play for some combination of both. So back, it's, it's changed a little bit now, but back seven, eight years ago, most contests had a very strict, okay, you finish first, this is what you get. You finish second, this is what you get. And sometimes, you know, depending on what a player's choice of prize was or preference in prize was, they would almost rather finish third than first, depending on the, you know, the layout of the prizes. So I, so I came up with Pick Your Prize, which literally is Pick Your Prize. You know, we, have, as you've seen, you've been here, you know, we do a physical prize board. And depending on the year, there's 25, 30, 35 different little, you know, things that are Velcroed to the board. And in order of finish, you know, we, we determine, OK, the top seven or the top eight get two picks and then nine through 30 get one pick. It all depends on how many players are in there. But you go up and if you want the cash prize, you take the cash prize. If you want the NHC seat, you pick the NHC seat. So it really leaves the choice of prize open to the player. And we've had a, a player that want finished first and picked all the cash and didn't take any NHC or BCBC seed. And we've had years where, you know, NHC and BCBC go first and, and cash. And it, it also adds a little bit of drama because if you're sitting there underneath in 12th, 15th, 20th place, you know, 
you're hoping, you know, that someone above you picks, you know, the thing that you, you don't. But it's a, you know, we, we, we call it the best NHC qualifying opportunity of the year, you know, not, not, to, not to stroke our own fires. But, you know, we gave out 25 NHC seats last year, which is the most of any contest, you know, ever, if I'm not mistaken. We had, we had 290 entries. So the, the prize board last year, we actually ran out of space on the prize board. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, need a, we, need a bigger, we need a bigger boat this year. But we had t- 25 NHC spots last year, seven BCBC seats, and nearly $100,000 in cash um, available on the board. The 32nd place finisher last year ended up with an NHC seat. So uh, that, that was something else that I wanted to do as well. I, I wanted to spread out the prizes enough so that a, a large um for, for me personally I, I would rather have more players win good prizes than fewer players win incredible prizes um it, i haven't had any issue with that it's been it's been well received there's some other contests that are more top heavy where if you win you get you know a king's ransom i, I wanted to spread it out a little more you know if you win you certainly you're doing quite well um, but I also wanted to spread it out so that we have a, a large majority of, of winners. So, again, if, if you finish in, tw- in 32nd place last year in this contest, you were heading to Eddie, NHC, um, which, which, you know, it has been extremely well received. Yeah, I love it because there's sort of a democratization that takes away that, I don't want to call it a problem, but that idea of a live bankroll contest where most of the money is at the top, that puts the average Joe horse player – at a disadvantage against somebody for whom money is not an object, but in your format, you can, am I correct to say you can double two and a half times your money of, of your starting bankroll and have a good chance to cash that major prize. You don't have to do anything reckless in terms of, you know, risking it all on, on you, you can bet a little bit more normally and still have a chance to cash. I love that about the more flat nature of your contest. And I just love in contests in general that we have, I don't think there is one right, way to do it. I think there's a variety of ways, and, and I think yours fits very nicely into the overall paradigm, especially to give a smaller player a chance to compete in a live bankroll environment. Right. So so you, it's a $2,000 buy-in. A uh, thousand of that goes to your bankroll. So you start betting with a thousand dollars. You can, um, this is kind of like the BCBC, you can win your way in. Uh, Horse Tourneys has been running feeders for, for months now. So I think, uh, I think a feeder for this contest is like $156, something like that. So, you know, for $156, give or take, you can win your way in or you can pay $2,000 to get in. And, and you're right, Pete, the, the, your starting $1,000 bankroll last year for John Costin, who finished 32nd, his final bankroll was uh, $2,550. So a, a little bit more than done. I actually feel like that was a little high last year. What, what I usually tell players is if you double your bankroll by – about the time that the last race is with, with one race to go, you're, you're in contention. You know, it's yeah. not, you're, you might have to hit the last race to move up, but again, I'm not saying that doubling your bankroll is easy. Um, but you, to your point, we're not, we're not saying you can, you're only going to win a prize if you multiply your bankroll times five, you know, if, yeah, if you have a decent day, as, you know, it, it, right. it, you see some of these numbers at the top of live bank contest to get in the prize pool. I mean, 15 is high to, to just get in the prize pool, but you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. It's, it's your number was probably better there. I should have left it, left the ex, left the math to the pro. But let's talk about the, the specifics of how your contest works, how many races you have to bet, tracks involved, where you can play. Yep. So it's um, you can play a high, it's a high, what we call a hybrid contest. So you can play online or on site. Um, we, we do a nice, we have a room here at Mama called the Turf Club. It sits probably 200, 250 people. So as many players that are interested in playing on site, we can, we can accommodate. We do a nice lunch buffet and, and the Turf Club has everything you could need. There's obviously bedding machines in there. We put out a nice lunch buffet. There's bathrooms right in the machine. It overlooks the track. So it's kind of a, a, a mini NHC. You know, we put big round tables in there and, and you know, you sit with, with groups of eight or 10. But you don't have to leave that room for anything, basically food, betting, view of the races. It's all right there. Um, but then you can also play online. So TVG, Express Bet, and then this year for the first time, HPI is, is being part of it. So that's a Canadian ADW. So some of our now in a, a post-COVID world, it's a little harder to travel for, for some players. So we just want to make it available for as many people as, as possible. 
Um, because we do a, a physical prize board that we need to finalize, we do um, basically force pre-registration. There's no day of walk up and sign up like our normal contests are. So if you are playing on site through TVG or through HPI, you have to sign up by 3 o'clock Eastern the day before, which is Friday, June 2nd. If you're playing Express Bet, you can sign up directly through them uh, up until the first race on Saturday. Uh, Express Bet is the only one of those ADWs that, that, excuse me, Express Bet and HPI are the two ADWs that you can sign up directly through them. So they, they will have portals right on Express Bet and HPI that you can pay and enter the contest right through them. If you're playing through TVG or playing on site, you need to contact me to register. And then obviously if you're playing TVG, we send the money over to TVG to um, set up your bankroll. But the TVG or on-site customers need to contact me. Uh, I'm sure my email is easily found someplace on your site or you can go to monmouthpark.com. Yeah, hit us with it if you don't mind, just so folks have it handy. Yep, so it's B Skirka S-K-I-R-K-A, at monmouthpark.com. Right. So yeah, again, you just need to be registered by 3 p.m. Eastern on the day before. But again, on site or online are the options. From a betting menu standpoint, it's Mammoth races only. So we should have at least 12 to 14 races that day. Um, you are mandated to bet at least five of them, at least $200 per race. So that's your, you know, you obviously have to bet a minimum of $1,000 that you start with. The betting menu is win, place, show, exacta, and double. Okay. Uh, we do we do not do trifectas here. Um, other tracks do. We we do not, and it's it's purely just a personal preference thing with me and some players that I've talked to. I just, I don't love the idea of someone being able to not that they you know maybe they would you know bet a phone number and hit a trifecta for twenty grand and win and win the contest. <laughs> um, to, to me, to me, trifecta is kind of un uneven the the playing field in the sense of. You know, if, if you are a trifecta player and you hit something for $10,000, which is, you know, not easy to do, but not out of the realm betting trifectas, you know, it, it makes it harder on a, a win place better or an exacta better to to catch you. So I, I feel like win place show exacta double kind of keeps it so that there's not going to be one big score for $100,000 that ends the contest. And it, knock on wood, it's it's gone well so far. Again, there's plenty of contests that have different rules and folks can always find one that suits them, I think. And I always make this offer and a lot of people have taken me up on it. If you have questions, if you've never played in a contest, you want to learn about what contest might suit you, reach out to me at Looms Boldly on Twitter. I'm happy to give you advice to be your contest Sherpa. We've had some real success stories that way. Um I think we could say up to and including uh, Drew Cody. I, I'll, I'll take I'll take the littlest bit of credit Absolutely. for helping help me get him started in this uh, in this realm. And MammothPark.com. There's going to be a ton more information. I'm looking forward to going down there for the for this contest. Always love taking that boat ride down uh, from the from the city and uh, cruise right by the Statue of Liberty, and then you're just a short Uber from Mammoth Park and just the great summer vibes and the meat itself is off to a to a pretty darn good start brian you got a little unlucky with weather on preakness day but other than that it looked like the numbers were up and the racing was of good quality yeah numbers were very strong um we've actually run fewer races by design um to this point than we did last year but handle is is up you know so handles up with fewer races so that obviously is a, that. Is a very good thing we, we lost the turf both days this past weekend saturday sunday due to a bunch of rain on saturday but as you said, numbers are, are still incredibly strong. And then the uh, the meet begins in earnest this weekend. Memorial Day weekend is, I think we'll start running 12, 12 races a day now on weekends. We have been running 10. Um, so hopefully, you know, the weather the weather uh, cooperates and, and everything is, is, is strong so far. The, the one thing I do want to just go back to pick your price for one second I wanted to Please. add is um, for, for any player who is going to play on site or is thinking about playing on site, we, we also have a, a smaller NHC qualifier the day after on Sunday. So that, that was something that we added a few years into pick your prize on a recommendation from players, which was a, a good recommendation. If, if you're coming from, from way out of town to add a second contest the next day, just makes it so much more worth your while, you know, two, yeah. two, two chances to qualify. Yeah. 
two chances at tour points. And so we, we took that recommendation and, and that has been very well received as well. So if that might be your tipping point, if you're deciding to, to come on site or play online or, or, you know, and, and you don't, you can just play on the Sunday one, you know, if you, if you, if you're new to contests and, you know, maybe $2,000 is a little too rich for you to start out. The Sunday contest is a $300 buy-in. 150 to bankroll, 150 to entry fee. So, you know, there's no reason that you can't play in that, even if you don't play on, on Saturday. And we get a combination of both. We get the player who's in for pick your prize from out of town. They'll stay and play Sunday. But we also get some of our regulars who might be at a little lower financially that they'll come and play on Sunday. Oh, that's a that's a terrific opportunity. Just want to underline the whole idea of qualifying. So important. Uh, Horsetourneys.com right now. Get on there. Get in these events and try to qualify for this year's Pick Your Prize. Um, you can also just generally speaking for those big events, uh, NH, biggest events, NHC and BCBC, qualify on the sister site, Horse Players. Horse Players is where we're going to be having our Horse Player Happy Hour events that start Belmont Week. But then we've also got a fun thing happening that we're going to be coordinating together, Brian, on your Haskell Preview Day. Let's have folks save the date on that one and tell them what's going on and give them the, the overview of your contest schedule throughout the Haskell, throughout the Monmouth Park season. Yep. So, so that will be a, you know, for anyone listening who's never played in a contest before that, you know, maybe this piqued your interest. Haskell Preview Day is, is a day that you should circle to, to play. Uh, it's Saturday, June 17th. It's the day before Father's Day. Pretty sure that's the right date. Uh, yep. So Saturday, June 17th, um, as, as we said, it's Haskell preview day. So that's exactly what it sounds like. We, we have six races on Haskell day, which is our biggest day. Pretty much all of those races will have their prep race on Haskell preview day. And, and Pete, you and I talked about ways to kind of play up that day. It was very successful last year. We want to play it up even more. So we worked together. We talked to McKay over at, at horse tourneys. And what we're going to do is have in essence, a free contest available that day. The, it's actually, you know, you're going to have to pay a dollar to enter, but then you'll get your dollar back afterwards. But in essence, it's going to be it's going to be a net zero. And all the Mammoth races will be available that day. It's what's called a, a pick and pray. So you pick every race at Mammoth. It's the two dollar mythical win place. You pick all the races ahead of time. And then the top five finishers that day will win a seat into the, the Haskell contest. We have a $1,000 contest on Haskell Day. That's a live money contest. Um, so if you, if you finish in the top five of this horse tourneys contest on Haskell Preview Day, you'll win your way into that Haskell contest. And then I think the overall winner is going get, to get some cash to donate to um, their favorite horse charity. So that's great as well. Awesome. Um, so it, it's, it's, you know, like you said, if, if for, if you're a seasoned contest player, you might as well take a, a free role. If you've never played in contest before, this would be a great way to dip your toe in the water and, and see what it's like, to, you know, the pick your prey format. The next contest after pick your prize weekend we have is the aforementioned Haskell challenge. So that's a thousand dollar buy-in. There will also, in addition to what we just talked about, the, the, in essence, free, uh, qualifier horse tourneys will run feeders for that as well uh, once pick your prize is over they'll switch over and start running feeders to the haskell contest the haskell contest is a little bit more bcbc skewed because the haskell itself is a win and you're in for the breeders cup classic and we have a great partnership with breeders cup always but that that day especially uh, i think last year we gave out seven seats to the bcbc last year through that haskell contest and two nhc seats so whereas Pick Your Prize is a little bit heavier skewed towards NHC, Haskell is a little bit more skewed towards uh, BCBC, but it's the same kind of thing. You can still, a, you know, you can pick your, your prize. If you want an NHC seat, you could certainly pick that. Um, so that is, that's Haskell Day. And then we have two kind of newish contests in August that I'm sure we'll talk about throughout the season. One is, is Whitney Day, the first Saturday in, in August. And then the second is Traverse Day, the last Saturday in August. Those will be Mammoth Saratoga contests. And for a first time, they will be, again, what we call hybrid contests. You'll be able to play either online or on site. In the past, right. we just we just have done on site uh, Traverse Day contests. So we want to get more and more players qual or, uh, you know, playing and qualified. And we're going to open it up to online or on site. Oh, it sounds terrific. And in, in addition to the, 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 uh, the free contest on preview day, we're going to be doing a little live stream to accompany that. And we'll be talking about contest strategy and things like that. Similar content to what we do throughout the year for horse player happy hour, but very excited to be partnering 
with Brian and Monmouth and horseplayers.com for all this stuff. Brian, we're just about out of time. I just wanted to thank you for coming on and sharing your uh, your thoughts and the experience and giving us the lowdown on what to expect from contests at Monmouth Park. If you're watching this on YouTube, this will be the end of the show. If you are listening, stay tuned because we've got more. Brian, thank you very much. Pete, always a pleasure. We'll see you in about a week and a half.